was I wrong a few weeks ago to somehow give the impression to people that I was praising those men who I successfully opposed time and again? Well, yes, I was. I regret it. And I'm sorry for any of the pain or misconception they may have caused anybody. Mm, finally, Joe Biden apologized, not for being a sleepy veep, but for admitting that he could work with people he disagreed with, including awful Democrats from his very own party. <laughs> to make his point, he used segregationists, who were the backbone of the Democratic Party. But unfortunately, we live in a world where deliberate misinterpretation is weaponized Kamala Harris knew Biden wasn't being racist and that he wasn't complimenting segregationists. On the contrary, it was their heinousness that served the example well. Everybody knows that. But as long as there's room enough to slide in a gotcha, there's room enough to gain an edge. Among Democrats, saying gotcha is speaking truth to power. Yeah. So Joe's example of being able to work with racists became Joe throwing slumber parties with cross burners while they braided each other's hair and wrote each other love poems in their yearbooks. So now Biden limps along like an injured gazelle on the Serengeti, unaware that his apology is but the first in a long line of ones he'll be giving because one is never enough and two is just the appetizer. He'll be apologizing until the dessert is served and the check comes. And Joe's been around a long time. For today's left, just being alive in the past is proof of collaboration and worthy of a witch burning. And remember, Joe was born less than 100 years after the end of slavery. So I want to feel bad for Joe, but then I remember this. Mm -hmm. These Republicans don't want working class people voting. They don't want black folks voting. Unchain Wall Street. They're going to put you all back in chains. Biden could smear with the best. So what goes around comes around. And today, everything comes around until Joe goes away. Speaking of going away, I would uh, offer up a moment of silence for Mr. <laughs> Eric Swalwell, but no one wants to lose a moment of silence from this show. But let's just, <laughs> do you want to just show his exit, whatever? But well, we have to be honest about our own candidacy's viability. You know, an American author, Louis L'Amour, wrote in The Lonely Mountain, there will be a time when you believe everything is over. That will be the beginning. Today ends our presidential campaign, but it is the beginning of an opportunity in Congress with a new perspective. Jesse, you're as crushed as I am. <laughs> <laughs> you called it, too. I'm a little upset because I had Gillibrand the first to drop, but you had Swalwell. Yes. So again, Greg wins and I lose. <laughs> I'm getting used to it. Uh, on the Biden situation, the big difference between yeah. Trump and Biden is this. Mm -hmm. Biden runs away from controversy and Trump runs towards it. Mm. And if you look at Trump over the last couple of years, even controversial things in his own party, he's hung tough on tariffs, on the border, on the travel ban, even his personal so-called scandals, he's really dug in hard. Whereas Joe Biden, over the course of four months, basically, has changed positions or apologized on the Hyde Amendment, segregationists, Anita Hill, inappropriate touching, the Chinese threat. And this is the worst form of apology because it's insincere. Mm. It was forced. He didn't want to give it, but he had to give it. And it looks like the base is leading him instead of him leading the base. It doesn't look like he has the presidential timber, whereas President Trump, highest approval rating he's gotten so far in the latest poll by ABC, Washington Post. And I think that's because the Mueller report has kind of slowed things down. You've had two very successful overseas trips in Europe and in Asia. And the American public is kind of beginning to contrast the president yeah. with some of these other Democrats. And they're looking at him more favorably, plus the great economic news coming out in June. Also, uh, America's uh, female soccer team won the World Cup. Thanks to Donald Trump won. <laughs> I don't think there's any question. Yes, yes. He led uh, them to victory. Yeah, Katie and I were talking about the golden boot. I think a lot of Americans like to give him the golden boot. Uh, Not enough, though. <laughs> Not enough. Oh, yeah? How about, how about we'll those see. numbers, those poll numbers? What's the disapproval, Jesse? They're the best I think it was the same numbers that Obama had no, and he was reelected. No, Jesse. Exact same time. Oh, you saw, exact you heard same that on the daily numbers. briefing. <laughs> <laughs> I watched that religiously. Yes. Well, I will say this. I think Joe Biden's still getting back into fighting shape, into campaign mode, if you will. Mm -hmm. So he's right. on the way back. Uh, and you mm -hmm. hear this criticism inside the Democratic Party that he's slow now. I mean, he was slow to announce, and he's still getting back to his A game. Slow Joe.
Small Joe, there you go. That's Slow what Trump, that's what Trump says, right? That's no, sleepy. he's a Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe, Slow <laughs> Joe, who knows? But I will say that what you do get is Donald Trump, Katie, immediately tweeting about Joe Biden. He's not tweeting about Harris. Right. He's not tweeting about Pocahontas. Mm -hmm. He's tweeting about the guy that he's worried is going to beat him. Mm -hmm. Give him the golden boot, and that's Joe Biden. <laughs> so is Slow Joe have his mojo, or is it a no-go? Look, I mean, how long is it going to take Joe Biden to get into the race? I mean, this is crucial timing. He's at the top of the, the, the pack, and he knows because of that the chances of him going down are inevitable, and he has to hold on to that front that front spot. He keeps leaning on the Obama legacy, and not only is Obama not endorsing him, but people in the Obama camp are running away from him as fast as possible and also openly criticizing him. I mean, David Axelrod again over the weekend saying, I don't know if this guy can make it to the end based on all of his flip-flopping. And in the end, what's the point of having a moderate lane in the Democratic primary if Joe Biden is just going to continually change his positions? And when he gets to a general, if he becomes the nominee, which is not inevitable, by the way, what is he going to actually run on, considering he's changing all of his positions? He says, I apologize for what I said a couple weeks ago. Well, this was a position that you took over the course of 40 years of your career in the Senate. So are you apologizing for that, too? I mean, mm -hmm. what is his platform? I'm not sure. That's a good point. He's turning the moderate lane into Lombard Street. <laughs> Very curvy. <laughs> yes. And bumpy. Yes, and bumpy. Running out of road. <laughs> yes. OK, um, this new political climate does not seem to suit him well. Yeah. So it's... he's been running for office for 40 years. Um, when you are running as the vice president on a ticket where President Obama is super popular, you're running on that ticket, and he was a good vice president for him. I'm not saying that yeah. he wasn't. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you are then the great, the best candidate for this political moment that we are in. And think of the progression. He said what he said. He then he told Cory Booker that Cory Booker should apologize. Like I'm not going to apologize. Yeah. And it was like, oh, he's got some fight in him. And then he does an interview in which he says, I didn't expect for them to come after me. <laughs> then he says, Oh, actually, I'm sorry. <laughs> so think about this debate in the next three weeks. Um, it is likely, just the way things work out, that Elizabeth Warren will be on the stage with him. So if I'm her, I'm thinking, what else could I get him on? Mm -hmm. How could we get him on that progression? And you could go back 45 years, whatever, and find something that he's done to help support Wall Street. Right. Or some, or um, Bernie Sanders will go after him on health care. And you could see the same type of progression happening to the point where you're, I think you were saying that the, the base is leading him to positions that he doesn't necessarily hold. Your point about the new terrain, there's, it's, it's, it's a great, it was like when I took my driver's test, I had to use a car that was 20 years old because I couldn't ride the car that my wife had because I didn't understand any of the gadgets. <laughs> it, it had like the rear view mirror yeah. movie Screening thing. You, yeah, and it was, uh, nothing made, so I had, in order to pass the test, I had to use like a Taurus. Oh, from like 1999. Yeah. It, also, it, it also gets you to your destination. Yes. Let yeah. me just say, uh, Biden, you know, for all that we're talking about. Yeah, no, here, people still like him. I get it. Yeah, people do like yeah. him. And he's, I think, and, you know, going back to what Jesse was saying about that Washington Post ABC poll, I think he's plus 10 over Trump in that poll. And nobody else is above Trump in that poll, except for like maybe one or two. Well, but no, it's they're all tied, slightly above. But pretty but they're much within tied. margin of error, is your point? But yeah. I think that the key to, you know, as we're looking at Biden today and the apology is to understand that his base of support in the moderate lane that Greg's talking about, the Democratic Party, remains very strong. I, I hope and it does. That same poll had Hillary beating Trump by 13 points, mm. one. Just to let when, you When know. was at the end there? Yeah. And, and 16. Yeah. Not now, I hope not. No. Not she's now. Like, she's running? Yeah, that she's would be running good news again. for you. <laughs> <laughs> you would <laughs> <laughs>